Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am back with episode 3 of the postage stamp quilt. In this video, I am going to be showing you how to start your postage stamp blocks with bigger blocks. Especially good for those of you who might have charm packs of 5 inch squares. I'm going to show you how you can use those. Another good thing is for those of you who buy my scrappy pre-cuts during my fabric frenzies, the next one is August 30, 2019. If you're watching in the future, past that date, there may be another one coming up. Just subscribe and you'll learn about it when it's on its way. I used to make the scrappy pre-cuts all different sizes because I was going by what I actually had left for remnants at the end of a bolt. But now I have been making them all about five inches square, generous five inches square. You should be able to get five inches out of all of them. Again, give or take, it depends on the width of the fabric. But I would say most of them are a little bit generous, like five and a quarter to even maybe five and a half on some of them. They are perfect for this. By using those, you are going to get a whole shitload of prints. Because I sell those usually like a set of 50 or 100 with no duplicates. No duplicates. So you get 50 squares, all different. And, oh my God, how incredibly exciting for postage stamp quilters. I also do sell scrappy pre-cuts on eBay as penny auctions, and some are buy it now, and those are usually like at least five inches. So you're free to go shop there. My eBay link is always down below. I got interrupted. I'm back. I did want to mention that the scrappy pre-cut penny auctions those blocks are various sizes. Uh, you know, some might be uh, three and a half inches by five. You always have to look at the description to see the size. And I do also sell some that are pretty close to postage stamp size. You might have to trim them down a little bit. So just go check out all my stuff. You're going to be happy that you did. All right. Um, the frenzies I wanted to mention are for patrons and YouTube members only. The scrappy pre-cuts that I've been talking about, like lots of 50 or 100, those usually sell out inside the frenzies, but if not, the leftovers go over to eBay. Also, I only sell to USA during the frenzies and the flash sales that I do on my blog, which are exclusive to patrons and YouTube members. But if you are outside of the USA, you can bid or buy on eBay as long as you're part of the global shipping program but the shipping will not be free for you. It's free for everyone in the U.S. Here is why I'm so excited about this method. And believe me, I'm sure I did not make this up. I'm also sure that I haven't really ever seen this uh, in all the videos I've watched. I don't know. I've probably seen it in the past and just don't remember. But it's just something that last night I was thinking, how can I use the pre-cuts in a way to make the you know, the little four patches of postage stamp quilts, and I just thought about it, and I thought, hmm, I think this will work, and boy did it. It's quick, it's easy, and you get an almost near-perfect intersection every single time, at least in your four patches. Now, when you sew your patches together to make bigger patches, you can still screw up there, but if you have a good start, then you should be okay. I'm going to show you the scrappy pre-cuts that I still haven't sorted. I have a box full. I need to still sort those so everybody gets one print of each. And again, that will be available in the next Frenzy. I did want to mention that if you don't know what I'm talking about, there is a playlist link down below and on the end screen and also on my blog, darlingmishow.com. You can catch up and watch episodes one and two, and then this will make more sense to you. I also want to mention that I absolutely do not care to do any of the postage stamp quilt with strips. I forced myself to because I ended up cutting a bunch of two inch strips, exact two inch strips, forgetting that all the little scrappy squares that I started with were generous two inch squares. So my little tiny blocks finished inside once they were sewn together 
were not the same size. And I forced myself to do that because I thought it doesn't matter. So my intersections on most of my 16 patches are way off to the point where there were times that I even purposely turned something so that they wouldn't match, that they would be like almost in the center of the block next to it. I was just having fun with it and I told myself, if I really do want to learn how to do perfect intersections an easy way, because I don't like difficult, the best way for me to do that is to just sew and sew and sew, and it will eventually come to me. The idea will come to me. Now, at the beginning of this series, I believe I mentioned that I was going to show you three different ways to make your little blocks. One was by having individual little squares, which we did. The other was strip sets, which we did, which I don't care for at all. And then I said something about starting with bigger squares. I believe I threw that into the mix. At the time, I had no clue how I was going to do that. <laughs> but I said it. So I said, I have to figure out a way to make these scrappies work. And I am so happy that I came up with this. And again, it's probably all over the internet. You know, I don't really watch a whole lot of videos. So if it's uh, something you know how to do, just, you know, just say, okay, so she just didn't know how to do this. I'm not a quilter. And I've never done something that requires this many intersections, even if they don't match. I'm calling mine the perfectly mismatched postage stamp quilt. So, uh, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to put it on eBay because I, 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 I'm putting a lot of time and effort and I'm really in love with this process. So I don't know, but I don't need another quilt top. I, and I would never finish it into an actual quilt. It would end up just being folded and put away somewhere. So I really hope it makes it to eBay at the end. If it does, it will start at a penny with free shipping for U.S., not free for outside of the U.S. All right, let's just get over to the machine now. I'm very excited. Yes, you will hear my mother's TV. These are some of the scrappy pre-cuts that I already have cut. I have way more to cut, and they're not sorted yet, but these are the blocks that I'm talking about that you can get uh, during my fabric frenzies. Absolutely love that print. Oh, my God, I just love them all. And again... You know, I sell like lots of 50, 100. Once in a while, I'll do 200. No duplicates. Now, I have some that I cut for myself. There's duplicates in these, and that's okay because I have a lot to make. So I'm going to use some of those to show you my method. I also want to show you how I keep things organized. This way, I can just pick up these trays and move everything for when I need my space to do something else. I get these little trays when I buy my mother those treats that you might have seen me buy her before in one of my Walmart videos. Okay, this tray is all my little generous two-inch squares. I really like that method. I just started the new method today, so I'm going to be happy to continue in that way. But I have all these uh, generous two-inch squares. Look, my little panda bears. And I really enjoy this way, too, because you do get more of a variety of uh, the way you arrange your blocks, you know, by the colors and stuff. So I keep getting interrupted by the phone. Hang on. Now, this box, those are my two patches that I already have made, and these are four patches that I already have made. And again, this is all from the old way I was doing things with very mismatched intersections. But I'm still using them. I'm putting them all in the quilt top because whatever, I don't care. This box has my 16 patch blocks. These have already been pressed and trimmed to six and a half inches, and these have not. I haven't put four of those together yet. I'm waiting until I have a lot of them because I need a lot of them. And then, oh, hi, little squirrel. And then I will, um, you know, be putting them together because, like, if I have a lot of blocks with panda faces peeking through, you know, I might want to space those out. So I just need to lay everything out when I'm ready. Let's look at some of my intersections. Look, horrible. Don't care. I mean, everything is horrible. Way off here. That's fine. Everything is going in. I'll have some blocks that are all mismatched and then some that will be better. And some, look, this is even wonky. It's going narrower this way. And I'm okay with that. It's just all fun. You just keep sewing and you'll get the hang of it. 
And even if you don't, we can purposely do this. You know, if this is exactly what we were going for, then I'd win a fucking prize for doing it right. Wow, that is really kind of cool. This is much longer. See, I like stuff like that. I prefer wonky always. But it is exciting to find a way to make better intersections, and we're going to do that right now. You are going to grab two blocks, any prints. Now, you don't have to be using five inch squares. You can use six inch, four inch, whatever you want. But if you want to do your entire quilt this way, then you just want to make sure you start out with the same size blocks. If you have two, because mine are cut scrappy, that's why I call them scrappies. If you have two that don't quite match, like these don't, I put the shorter one on the top. We're going to be sewing down each edge. So let's just start here. So when I go to sew on this edge, I'm going to follow the edge of the smaller block. No need to bother to trim that. Now, even though I'm sewing both edges, instead of stopping, turning, wasting thread, I'm just going to send my next two through. And I would just keep doing that. I would send two and two more and two more. But for the sake of the video, we'll stop here. Now I'm just going to turn this whole thing and we're going to sew the other side. And this one, I'm going to follow the edge of the shorter fabric. So you would just do that to a whole bunch of blocks all at once. You really do save a ton on thread. Oh, and speaking of thread, this is the perfect time to use up all your um, bobbins that have odd colors or have just a little bit. I even put bobbins on the top. That's what I'm using right now. I don't know the newer machines if you can use a bobbin as the top thread, but I can. So, and I have emptied probably 15 bobbins that were just sitting there. Okay, now we have our little blocks. Let's snip them apart. This is the two edges that we just sewed. Take the sewn edge and match it up to the sewn edge at the top. And if your blocks are a little bit mismatched like mine are, you want to match up the thread line as best as you can. So I'm just going to go like that. Okay, I do this right at my machine. I just hold this down and I cut along the fold. You can go cut them any way you want, but that's how I do it. I open, finger press, open, finger press. So you do get some color combinations that are the same, but we're talking a lot of little blocks in this quilt top, so you really won't um, see that this repeats. Now I'm going to put those aside. Let's take my next one. Fold the stitch lines. Cut across the fold, open and finger press. You can just open if you want and finger press later. I'm not caring anymore if I'm doing any nesting with my seams because there's so many times I want to just turn something and I just go with whatever. Take two now that don't match at all. You are going to put these together right sides facing and you can, uh, you know, turn it like I'm going to do it with the brown not touching the brown. It happens that I have two things with kind of like aqua in it and then two things that are kind of goldish and brownish. So I'm going to put this one on here, this one on here. So let's just go like this. And you notice I'm matching up the seams here. This is the seam, this is the seam. Now you just kind of want your thread lines again to match. We're going to turn this now. We're going to sew on the sides that have the seams. Here is the super cool thing about this. We only have one seam to match up. We're only going to really worry about this one. And we're not aiming for perfection here. We're maybe aiming to not have it be like more than a half inch off. <laughs> I'm just matching up here. I'm not concerned with this side. We're going to be concerned about this side when we get there. Let's sew. Again, I would just send more and more pieces through, but I'm going to stop here. And let's turn it. 
Now, even if this doesn't match, if the intersection seems to be off, actually the, the fabric is shorter on this side, so let me turn it over. Let's just say that for some reason you had this block a little bit wonky and your intersections are not matching. That's okay. You can still push it to match. This is going to be sliced like this. So no matter what, when we cut it, this is just going to all adjust itself. It's so super cool. So I have a shorter edge here, so I'm following that edge. We're just gonna sew down. So anxious to see. All right, again, we're going to take the sewn edge up to the sewn edge, and we're going to cut on the fold. At least that's what I do. Let's hope. Fingers crossed. Ah, look at that. Look at that intersection. Oh my goodness. Let's look at the next one. Okay, this one's off by a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm totally good with that. So now I have two four patches. If I do any trimming at all at this point, I eyeball it. I do not use my rotary cutter until I'm trimming my 16 patch blocks. That's the only time I pull out the rotary cutter. Now I do want to show you one other thing. Let's say you have two of these that we did in step one. Instead of making a four patch, let's say you prefer to have uh, four little blocks in a row and sometimes we need that. Maybe for whatever reason, we need to cut a 16 patch and we need to add a strip of blocks on one side to make up for that. Here's what you can do. Once again, you're going to match up your intersections, putting your color combo the way you want. You're not so concerned about the intersections this way because, let me show you. You're going to sew down parallel to that intersection. So we're not sewing this way like we just did we're sewing this way. We're not jumping over those seams. Now we're doing that on just one side. This time we're going to fold this way. So have your seam, you know, pointing toward you. Fold up and then cut along the fold. And then when you open, you have your nice little four patch going this way. I prefer this than to working with cutting strips. I find it, I don't know, kind of boring to sew a bunch of strips together. I just don't care for that. I like this much better. And then, you know, you can just put those where you need, or you can just make a whole bunch like this if you want to match them up like that. All right, that is it for this video. Please subscribe so you don't miss the next one. And I do know many of you absolutely hate how much I talk. I know that because of all the years of having comments on. And I just want to explain to you, I'm a vlogger, not a quilter. My channel is all about just me wanting to chat with you guys. So if you don't like that, you can watch other videos or I might consider putting a timestamp in my videos to let you know like when the actual lesson begins. But if you're here for just that, you probably won't like my channel. Just letting you know that. I do like to chat. I like to explain the process. That's how I like to teach. I, I let you guys know how I start out and how I learn along the way. That's the important part to me. If that's not your thing, then we're not a good match, and I totally understand that. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!